As you remain standing with me, turn to the first book of the Old Testament, the book of Genesis, chapter 27. Genesis chapter 27, we'll be looking at 27 through 28.5. Genesis 27 through 28.5. But allow me just to read a few verses in your hearing this morning. You do realize we're in a series entitled, Help, My Home is on Fire. Amen. We want to get some homes put out Amen. that are burning up. Amen. Amen. Help, my home is on fire. We're starting at Genesis 27. Amen. Starting at verse 30 in your hearing this morning. In verse 30. Now it happened as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and Jacob scarcely gone out from the presence of Isaac, his father, that he saw his brother came in from his honey. He also had made savory food and brought it in to his father and said to his father, let my father rise and eat of his son's game, that your soul may be blessed. And his father Isaac said to him, who are you? So he said, I am your son, your firstborn Esau. Then Isaac trembled exceedingly and said, who? Where is the one who hunted game and brought it to me? I ate all of it before you came, and I have blessed him, and indeed uh, he shall be blessed. When Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with an exceedingly great and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me, yes. me also, O my father. But he said, Your brother came with deceit and had taken away your blessing. And Esau said, is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright and look now he has taken away my blessing. And he said, have you not reserved a blessing for me? I wanna stop right there and tag this particular part of the series. Family schemes and tricks will burn down your house. Family schemes and tricks will burn down your house. Over the next several weeks in this series, we're gonna be looking into family closets in order to get rid of the junk and the fire hazards that are found in our closets. The closet, the closet is a place where we stash other things in, in order to keep others from seeing what's going on in a particular moment. I did say stash, because sometimes the doorbell rings and you gotta run and just stash something in the closet. How many of you have closets in your home where everything is just really neat and hung up and everything is just in its place? How many of you have closets that are semi-neat and semi-in order? Oh, I got a few honest folk in the house. Well, us real folk, well, uh, let me ask this rhetorically. I don't expect to see any hands on this particular one. Uh, uh, now, let's be honest. How many of you have closets in which everything was just thrown in and the door was shut as quickly as possible because otherwise everything will fall and roll out right back on top of you? I'm not even gonna look up on that one. As a kid, closets were something of a mystery to me. <laughs> Our closets never had lights in them like closets do today. And I thought they were much larger than they actually were. And that they had monsters in the way in the back part of that dark closet. Now some of you remember back then. Amen. It was always, I was always afraid of the end of the closet in my parents' bedroom. <laughs> Closets are interesting places. Sometimes they can be places where we hide things that we do not want others to find or others to see. Sometimes we stash things away back up in the closet that we intend to bring out at a later time when we can blend it in to what everything else is going on. Now, have you ever stole anything? 
but you had to hide it in a closet until you could bring it out until the right time without arising any type of suspicion. How many of us have hid things in the closet until we thought we could safely bring them out into the open? No, no I didn't steal anything, but maybe I bought a pair of shoes I don't want somebody to see right now. Or there's a dress that I, I know I ought not to bought that dress right now, but if I can hide it way back in the dark closet, Maybe it was a set of golf clubs that, hey man, if I just can get enough stuff covered over them and I can leave them there, that way when they ask the question, is that something new? Oh, no, no, no. I've had this old thing for a long time. It's, it's been way back in the closet. Sometimes we make our entire home closets in which we keep things hidden from those on the outside. We also place in them family secrets that can be very painful if brought out into the light. Now, what are some secrets that we have stashed in our family closet? Some of you have terrible tempers at home which you pull out of the closet, amen. And when you come out to the house of God, you're all smiling, you got a, amen, a happy face. But when you get home, you amen, not only do you just hang up your coat in the closet, but you pick up something else and put it on. It's called a terrible temper. <laughs> some of you have terrible spending habits. I, I didn't say some of you, I didn't say some of us. Uh, have terrible spending habits. You, you keep spending more than you have and you're getting deeper and deeper in debt and it's hurting your family, but you keep on shopping and pulling out that credit card out of the closet. Some of you have adopted lying and deceitfulness and ways at home that is destroying your trust in you and you keep pulling these old tricks back out of that same old dark closet. Yeah. Some of you have crossed sexual activity lines in your homes and that, amen, that you never should have crossed, but you keep pulling them out of the closet. Some of you are stealing from other family members and deliberately putting the suspicion on somebody else, thereby causing distrust in your home, and you just keep pulling that same stuff out of the closet. What do you realize, what you don't realize, is that these things will affect how you are treated by others for years to come. What fire hazards do you have stashed into your closet? Each of us need to be aware of the potential of evil that abides within all of us and realize that even an innocent behavior can be turned into a closet monster. Yes, we need to know ourselves better and know when a closet door needs to be kept shut and a padlock put on it. All of us here are facing some temptations to let something out of the closet. We have an appetite growing on the inside of us that, amen, to get this thing out. It, it may be more of this or some of that or to try out this. It may be for a person. It could be to go to a certain place. It could be just to look at, at something there that I ought not to be looking at. There may be something hiding in your closet that wants to come out. We need to keep a padlock on the closet door. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, keep the padlock on the closet door. <laughs> now, the lie is this. If you're not careful, I said the lie is this that comes out of the closet. It's telling you that you can handle it. Whatever the amen is telling you have an appetite for is telling you that you can handle it. And it will only be this one time. If you just do it just this one time, you get it out of your system and you don't have to worry about it anymore. Just, you might as well just give in to it get it over with and get it out and that's it. But I did say that is a lie, didn't I? Because it's just not true. If you have a problem with spending, buying just one more item on sale will not solve your problem. If you can't say amen, just say If you have a problem with getting something you can't afford, if, 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 if you get it, you, you, you still be tempted the next time to buy something else that you can't afford. If you have a problem with lust, getting into the lust will not stop you from lusting. If you really want to kiss a person that you have no business kissing, you can just think of it, if I just get this one kiss out of the way, I won't desire any more future kisses. Of course not, that's not the case. Your appetite will insist on just one more kiss. 
but this time it's with music in the background and the lights turn down real low. The only thing that giving into a temptation does is to make it easier to give into the temptation the next time. You and I will never be as strong against the temptation as before we give into it. The strength of standing against the temptation is as well as you're standing before you give in to it. When you feed an appetite, it demands more to be satisfied the next time. Once you break a diet, it's so easy to break it again. And before you know it, the diet is out the window. I'm on a diet. Well, let's have coffee tomorrow. What do you want to have it? Well, let's have it over there at the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> now, if you go on a diet, why do you want to have coffee at the Cheesecake Factory? You know you're just setting yourself up. <laughs> now, all of us, not all of us, but some of us, have schemes and tricks in our closets which pull out from time to time in order to get our way with our family. I said, not all of us, but some of us have tricks and schemes and forms of manipulation in order to get our way in our family. There's certain things we know how to get done when we want to get them done, and sometimes just being polite, just being honest, just being truthful won't get it done. And sometimes we feel we need to go to the closet in order to find out what we need to do in order to get our way. But we fail to think through it because the schemes and the tricks are fire hazards that will burn down your house. First of all, family schemes and tricks leads to favorites. Family schemes and tricks leads to favorites. In our scripture passage today, we have a family that has been chosen by God. Listen to that. They've been chosen by God to be a blessing to the entire world. God was going to use this family to send Jesus Christ ultimately into the world. The parents were Isaac and Rebecca, and they had a set of twin boys. Esau was born first, and Jacob came out of his mother's womb holding on to Esau's heel. As the boys grew, Esau was the athletic hunter type of guy. He was the outdoorsman. He was a sporty kind of guy. Jacob, however, was more sensitive. He, he, he liked to smell good, look good, feel good. Some would say he was a mama's kind of child. Let me just leave it like that. He liked to help out at home. Uh, he was just that kind of guy. Now, their father, Isaac, loved to eat wild animals, so Esau the hunter became his favorite son. Yeah, yeah. Jacob, Jacob enjoyed pleasing his mother, and he became her favorite son. Right. Now, it was natural in that day, like, amen, one child, like one child more than the other because, amen, of his or her personality. A loving child is easy to love, than a hard-headed one. That's just a reality. Now for us, the goal is to love our children justly and to treat them justly, not just e with equality. One child deserves a reward for getting a C, but another one needs to be held accountable for getting an A. One is more gifted intellectually than the other. Now, what's wrong is to treat a child unjustly and to seek to give another a clear advantage of favoritism. Yeah. Rebecca and Jacob treated their sons unfairly. Rebecca and Isaac treated their sons unfairly. And it started, amen, it started a lot of envy and rivalry and strife in their family to the point it was about to burn down the whole house. Yeah, yeah. It got to the point where Rebecca wanted the best for Jacob, even if it meant robbing Esau. And Isaac wanted the best for uh, Esau, even if it meant re robbing Jacob. All this stuff that was in the closet was starting to come out in different ways. Yeah. When Isaac got older, he became blind and his eyes got real dim. 
One day he wanted a real good home cooked meal, some, something of wild game. And he called his <clears throat> favorite son, amen, amen, to let him know that if you would go out and kill some game and prepare it the way you know I like it, that right seasoning on it, with the right amount of heat on it, amen. And when you bring that back, I'm going to give you a blessing, Esau, because you know you are my favorite son. Amen. And you're the firstborn. Amen. And amen. And when you get back and I eat it, I'm going to give you my blessing. Now, the only problem was that Isaac knew that before the boys were born, that God had already prophesied. I didn't say Rebecca. I said God had already prophesied. Not Rebecca. God had already prophesied that the youngest son yeah would rule over the older son. Yeah, yeah. However, Rebecca was having such a hard time with her pregnancy with a lot of pain, and she asked God, why is this happening to me? God told her that there are two nations in your womb. Yeah. Amen. And they would be separated. Yeah. And God further declared that the younger one would be stronger than the elder one, and that the elder one would serve the younger one. Isaac preferred his plan for Esau's life over God's plan for his life. Sometimes we as parents, we want more for our children than maybe God really has in store for them. And sometimes when we can't get our way with our family, and if we pray to God and we've asked God to give our family a certain thing, a certain kind of way, we have a way as parents of stepping in God's place and try to work out some schemes and tricks to bring about what God may not want, but what we want for our children, for ourselves. Because Esau was his favorite, Isaac overlooked his poor choices in life, Esau was making in his own life and attempting to overrule God's choice. Yes. I love a few scriptures here where in Psalms 33 and 11 through 12 says, the counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of the heart to all generation. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people who has chosen his own inheritance. Right. Proverbs 15, 22, without counsel, the plans go awry. But in the multitude of councils, they are established. Proverbs 16 and 9, a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his path. Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 37, 32 and 7 says, also the schemes of the schemer are evil. He devises wicked plans to destroy the poor with lying words, even when the needy speak justice. Yeah. But a gracious man devises gracious things, and by generosity he stands. When God has a plan, and God has put a plan in place, it doesn't do anybody any good to try to bring out some schemes and tricks out of the closet to frustrate what God has already declared there's going to be. Because God will have his way in spite of all your schemes and your tricks. Amen. And then family schemes and tricks lead to personal lies. Family schemes and tricks leads to personal lies. How many of our families today are hurting because we let our favorite child get away with all kinds of things? We challenge anyone who dares to say anything contrary to our favorite child. Now, that other child over there, or her over there, or him over there, say whatever you want, but that one favorite child, we won't even listen to what God has to say about their behavior without starting to defend them. We may insist, we may insist, we do not even have a favorite child, but talk to the rest of the children. The rest of the children know who is the favorite child in the household. They tell them, oh, no, that's mama's favorite child, and that's daddy's favorite child. And I just pray I'm Amy's Rayman or Big Mama's or Uncle somebody else's favorite child, but I'm sure they're not there. <sighs> Esau was only too happy to hear his father compromise on what God had planned for his life. Esau was all too happy. The only problem was that Rebecca overhears the two of them scheming against Jacob. Uh, she and amen, amen. She intends to kill a goat and cook a meal just like her husband. But she has some schemes in her own mind. She said Isaac's trying to scheme, but but brothers, let me just stick a pin in it right there just for a moment, because if you ever try to out scheme a woman, 
talking about a waste of time. I don't care how sharp you are, how many degrees you got hanging up on the wall. When you get a woman that got her mind made up, you can't think long enough, hard enough, deep enough, I dare not say dark enough, to out a woman that's got her mind made up. If you can't say amen, you can't even say ouch, all right. <laughs> she got a scheme in her own mind. She intends to kill a goat and cook the meal just like her husband likes it. And send it in with Jacob, her favorite son. Jacob is afraid of the plan because he's afraid of what his father will do if he knows that he's lying and being deceitful to him. Now Jacob had smooth skin. His brother was hairy. But that was no problem for his scheming mind. Uh, she, she ties some hair from a goat skin on Jacob's neck and on, on his hands. And, amen. And Esau, Esau really took a bath and he smelled the B.O. throughout the entire house. However, Jacob likes smelling decent. No problem, she said. No problem. Rebecca puts on Esau's smelly clothes on Jacob's smelly, good-smelling body. And now he smells up the whole room like if Esau was in the room. He goes on into his father and offers him the meal that the mother has prepared. And when Isaac asks, who is it? He lies to his father. He tells a personal lie to his own father. Did not the Bible say, honor your mother and your father all the days of your life? But he lied based on his scheming mama's plan. I'm Esau, and I have done just like you told me. Please sit up and eat so you may give me your blessing. But Isaac knows something is up because the meal is prepared too quickly. He asks, how did you pull this off so quickly? Jacob lies again. Isn't that how lies, one lie links up with a, another lie? He lies that the Lord helped me and he helped me out and gave me great success. Isaac says, you, you, you sound like Jacob. Come closer to me and let me touch you. And he says, the voice is that of Jacob, but the hairy hands are that of Esau. Are you really my son, Esau? Hmm. And then Jacob lies again. I promise it's me. Isaac says, bring me the food so that I can eat it. Amen. And cover you and kiss you. And when he got close enough to him, Isaac can smell the clothes with one whiff. And he says, oh yeah, that's my boy Esau. <laughs> that's definitely Esau. Isaac was thinking it was Esau. Then he gave Jacob his blessing, in which again he knew in blessing uh, Jacob, which he thought was Esau, he knew he was going against God's holy word. Yeah. Yeah. Isaac proclaimed, be Lord over your brothers and my sons and your mother bow down to you. Jacob got the blessing from his father and ran out of the tent. Just a few minutes later comes in Esau ready to be blessed by his father. And when he said, Father, here I am with the food the way you like it. Sit up and eat so that you can be blessed. Isaac said, who are you? He says, I'm Esau. And once he heard it was Esau, he began to shake violently in his body as if he was having a seizure. He realized that Jacob had tricked him out of the blessing he wanted to give to his elder son, his favorite son, Esau. Esau begged for a blessing from his father. But Isaac did not have another one to give. Finally, Isaac told him in, in verse 40 of chapter 27, one day you will get tired of your brother and you will throw his yoke off of your neck. And then finally, family schemes and tricks leads to personal consequences. Family schemes and tricks leads to personal consequences. Esau was so angry with his brother Jacob that he thought in the back of his mind, it would not be long before my father dies, and when he does die, I will kill my brother Jacob. That's the last time he's going to scheme and trick me. Esau was willing to burn down the house with his anger. Burn it down. 
And Esau didn't mind letting everybody know how he felt about his brother. What do you think these schemes and tricks did to Esau's relationship with his mother and his brother? What do you think this episode of Rebecca's relationship happened with her Isaac, her husband? What do you think these schemes and these tricks that were brought out of the closet, amen, did to Isaac's relationship with Jacob, her son? This is not what Rebecca or Isaac was planning when they were putting their schemes into actions. But the family turmoil and anguish is what they got instead. When they were scheming, when they were plotting, they had it all figured out. They knew how it was going to turn out. But things don't always turn out the way you think they're going to turn out. Your little tricks and your schemes, sometimes they just backfire. Mm -hmm. They backfire. Come on. They may not realize it, but the schemes help strike the match to burn down their own house. Those two schemes should have never been brought out of the closet. Rebecca was so afraid that Esau was going to kill her, his brother that day, he, amen, amen, that, he, that when he dies, he wanted to send him away so that Esau would have a chance to let his anger cool off and subside. So she said, you know what? I better start up another scheme. Uh -huh. Come on. Now Esau, Isaac's favorite son, had already married some Hittites, some women that they were supposed to be married to yeah. from the surrounding area. Amen. So Rebecca said, listen, the last thing we want is for our other son, Jacob, to do the same thing. So Isaac, why don't you just send him off to our family and let him pick somebody from our family so we, we can keep the bloodline the way it's supposed to be. Rebecca is now pleading with Isaac to send him off. Amen. Isaac sends Jacob away with the blessing to get a wife from Rebecca's side of the family, which is also his side of the family. Yeah. Little like, little did Rebecca know come on. that this second scheme come on, come on, come on. to try to fix the first scheme yeah. was going to take her son away from her for 30 years. It also appears that even though Isaac was older than she was, she died. Yeah. Come on. She died. Come on. Rebecca died before Jacob ever returned home. Amen. She never saw her son that she loved, excuse me, her favorite son again. Things were not just supposed to go this way. Do you think she would have acted differently if she had known? that her schemes from the closet would have caused all this heartache and pain. Do you think she would have thought through it a little bit differently in the first place? Yeah. We don't know what the consequences will be when we let things out of the closet Amen. that should be locked up forever. Oh Rebecca never intended to destroy her family or to break up her family home or even to burn it down. She simply gave in to the temptation of trying to help her favorite son out. God does not need our schemes and our deception to bring about his plan. God had already declared that the younger son would receive the blessing. So if God declared it would happen, God didn't need somebody lying and being deceitful and tricking to get his way. God was going to have his way no matter what. There are consequences. When we scheme and when we trick, it backfires on our lives. Yeah. How many lives are sitting up in here today because of something that backfired because of a scheme that's gone wrong? Oh, you tried to trick somebody else and ended up tricked so, yourself. Yeah. I'm not sure what's all in your closet today, but I do know there are some monsters that want to come out and to devour you. You need to ask the question, what is going to happen when everyone finds out what I did. Uh. Satan has you thinking you can't get caught. Amen. God may have already been exposing you in a way that you could not even imagine. You need to ask the question, what will happen if things don't go the way I have planned? We can only control whether or not we choose to sin. However, nobody gets control of the consequences that comes as a result of our schemes and our tricks. Amen. We all have some regrets of opening the closet doors and letting something out that we wish had never been seen the light of day. I may have started out as some small thing 
and it became a, an appetite that would not be satisfied. It started out as something small, but the appetite for it kept continuing to grow. We need to ask, who am I asking to pay the price for the choices for me to sin? Mm -hmm. Then what am I bringing out of the closet? What am I bringing that I know I've been saved, that the blood of Jesus Christ has already prayed for? What little habit, what little actions, what kind, what kind of little schemes, what kind of little tricks, what kind of things am I attaching myself to that I know God has already spoken against, but I'm bringing out slowly and gently and just letting it be in. And people think that this is the new me. No, it's not the new me. It's not the best you. Who you think you're fooling? sees right through it. But you're asking people in your own home to pay the price for your sin. Sin never stops the consequences on just the person that's sinning. Sin always affects everyone in the house. Sin affects everyone in the house. We ask a lot of people to pay the price for our opportunity to have a good time. Why not ask them in advance if they're willing to pay the price just in case your plans don't go wrong. Ask them on the front end, I'm doing this or I'm about to plan to do this and if it goes wrong, this is what's going to happen. Is that all right with you? Why don't you ask it on the front end instead of just doing your the whole thing right. with your tricks and your schemes, having it your way, having everything the way that you right. want it right now, not realizing and thinking about the consequences, consequences that come. Why? Because the Bible has already prophesied. Everything that's done in the dark shall, not maybe so, I don't know, but shall come to the light. So it's not a question of if it's going to come to the light. It's just a question of God wants to be in control of our closets. Yes, sir. The first time we met Rebecca in the Bible, she was a model for all of us to follow. Yeah. She did not run away all at once. It was one compromise here and another compromise there. Yeah. But we should not define her by her final act of deceit. We should not define her by her final act of deceit. Yeah. We should not, amen, amen, we should not, listen, we should not <laughs> define her by her final act of deceit because God forgave her. Yes. when she repented, yes. just as God forgives us. Amen. It is so unfortunate that we try to define a person by how they acted at a given point in time in their life, maybe two years ago, four years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. We all have mess in our closets, and every once in a while we slip and let something out. But we ought not to be defined totally by that, because our life is much broader than that moment of weakness, that moment of time. She had so much gore going in her life, but she got caught up yeah. in tricks yeah. and schemes. Come on. We all have had some very unflattering moments, yes, which we do not wish to be defined by. It's amazing how much worse the sin of others seem, <laughs> even when we have thought of doing the same thing ourselves. Right. Right. But it's by the grace of God that we didn't do it. When I see my brother here sin, it just seems so big. But when I think about doing that same thing, it don't seem so big. God has the ability to change people. We need to accept the fact that God can change occurrences in people's lives. Jacob reaped what he sowed in deceiving his father. Yes, we can blame the mama for the schemes and coming up with the trick. But Jacob stood up and let him put that hair on his hands and on his neck. Yeah. Jacob stood up and put them old dirty clothes of his brother on his back and went in there and tricked his father. I did say that there are consequences for when you try to trick people. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But that's all right. Because whenever you think you got it all figured out, there's somebody that got a better trick and a better scheme than you have. Amen. Because when he got sent off, he got sent off to his father-in-law, who was nothing but a master trickster. Amen. And tricked him out of marrying who he wanted to marry in the first place. Later, his wife's father-in-law deceived him ten times with his wages. Sometimes we go through rough times because we are reaping what we sowed years earlier. Uh-huh. We got away, we think we got away with, amen, the little things out of the closet and nobody knows anything about it, but God 
knows all about it. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. God works it out. Amen. 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 See, God says, listen to no, no. I mean, all. Amen. Whatever you go through, a lot of times it's because of what you've already been through. Sometimes we go through rough times because we're reaping what we've sowed. God is not mocked. Whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Amen. So don't fool yourself while you're having a good time and thinking you're getting away with it and nobody else know about it. You think you got everybody fooled, including the preacher and God himself. But God sees right through it. Amen. In this family, the one who turned out to be the most forgiving of all was Esau. He was the one who lost the most. If God could change Esau's heart, change Esau's, change his heart, and his anger against his brother Jacob, and let his anger go, surely, surely in Christ, God can help a whole lot of us who, who, who got feelings against people that's not right. Because you've been tricked, you've been schemed against, you've been done wrong against. Amen. You, you think you've got a right to get even with somebody. But you need to let that thing go and leave it with God. God is calling us to a place of confessing. God wants us to confess and let out the claws of those things that you need to let go of. Amen. At our home, at our church, and repent of those things. Repent of those things. Repent of those things. God wants to invite Jesus into our closets so we can get rid of the junk and the fire hazards that's willing to burn down our house. 1 John 1, 7 says, that, But if you walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sins. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, we scheme ourselves, we trick ourselves, and the truth of God is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unright. I may be dirty, I may have come in here tricked, I may have come in here scheming, but I don't have to leave a schemer. I don't have to leave. Why? Because what? The blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse us. If we say we have not sinned, if we say we have not tricked, if we say we have not schemed, we will liar and make the word of God of none, amen, no use in our life. Listen, listen, and his word is not in us. But when you stand up and say, you know what, Lord God, it's me. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, that stands in the need of prayer. It's not my brother, it's not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, that stands in the need of prayer. Listen, God never gave up on this family. They had their problems, they had their schemes, and yes, they had their closet hazards. But through it all, when you stop what you're doing and turn back towards God, and say, God, I made a mistake. God, what I'm doing is wrong. I know it's wrong. You know it's wrong. What I'm so glad is that God will forgive you. If the house is on fire, he's got a fire department called the Holy Spirit of God that will come and blow off the fire and got your house on fire. God will restore and remodel that home. Put brand new granite, brand new tile, brand new cabinets, brand new appliance. He'll rebuild your whole house. Listen, God is a good God. Amen. The kings of Judah, of Israel, including the king of kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus Christ himself, traced their lineage back through Isaac and Rebekah. God did not give up on this family. And I'm here to declare to you that God would not give up on your family. If you seek the forgiveness of Almighty God for the wrong that you've done, for the wrong that you're doing, for the wrong you're thinking about, he will forgive you of your sin. He will deliver you from your sin. Because whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen. Amen. And amen. And if you've been done wrong, and you want to get even. Matthew 5, 4, 3 says that you've heard it said that you shall love your neighbors, amen, and hate your enemies. But I say to you, love your enemies and bless those who curse you and do good to those who hate you and pray for those who despitefully use you and persecute you. Whether those who scheme against you, those that trick you, he says, love them, love them. They're lying on you, love them. They're talking about you, love them. Amen. They set trips and women and the traps for you, love them. No matter what they say, Say to your face, no matter what they say behind your back, love them. That's the love of Jesus Christ. Hug them and love them, forgive them and love them. Hug them and love them, forgive them and love them. Hug them and love them, and forgive them and love them. You know what I'm telling you? That's with the fire out in the house. Amen. Amen. And amen. My time is just out. I just got to stop. But isn't God an awesome God? Tricks and schemes. Family schemes and tricks. What
burn down your house. But putting your trust in the master will blow it all up. No matter how messed up your family life may have been. No matter how messed up your family life may be. No matter how messed up in the days to come your family life may get. Don't ever forget that God has a plan. It's not a scheme. It's not a trick. It's called prophecy living. God has already prophesied how the life that he wants for you, that he wants for your family. No matter how bad it gets, God will forgive. And we ought to forgive one another and stop the house that's burning down. I'll give the Lord a hand. I'm just trying to stop that.